Hey guys, so how many of you have wondered to yourselves, where can I find the perfect equipment where I'm not going to miss a ball with that blade or that rubber? What's, what works perfectly for me? Well, I'm here to tell you today that there is no such thing as a perfect rubber. So I've been there before. When I was 15, 16, 17, 18, even up to 21, I was constantly trying to look for perfect equipment where I wouldn't miss a ball, the spin and speed and everything would be controlled, would be perfect, and I just love it, and there'd be nothing else that works. I'm here to tell you today that that's not true. So I get a lot of questions from other table tennis fans, and I love them, that asked me, what, what equipment hemming do you think suits me best? Will the hurricane suit me better? Will this suit me better? Will the, will the tennis be better on my backhand or forehand? And I give the same answer to everyone, regardless of what playing level they're at, whether they're advanced, intermediate, or, or a beginner. Because the real answer is, whatever suits an individual best is the best equipment for them. So there are many factors to, to decide what equipment is best for one, one type of player. For example, Tenor Geo 5 is a very fast rubber with good amounts of spin, and it's gonna be more suited to an advanced player rather than a beginner. Because advanced players generally hit harder and have more control. They're gonna get more out of this rubber and they're still gonna be able to control it at the same time. Whereas a beginner is gonna feel like this rubber is a bit too fast and they can't get a good amount of speed and spin on it because they haven't learned as much technique or built as much control as the advanced player. On the other hand, an advanced player wouldn't like a rubber such as Schreiber. A beginner, on the, a beginner would love this rubber because they can put their own power and spin into it and it's perfectly suited for them. So if you're willing to spend a bit of money, which I know equipment is expensive, and if you're willing to spend a bit of money, my advice to you would be to, to go out there, try many, many different things, and like anything, through trial and error, you're gonna know what suits you the best. And then you're gonna, you're gonna find the equipment that you're gonna, you'll be able to get the most out of. But don't expect that it's gonna be perfect, because like anything, there's pros and cons to every, every product or equipment that there is. So for example, you could get an equipment that you think is, it, it works great for you, but it's not gonna be something that you won't miss a ball out of. You can't expect that it's gonna do everything for you. At the end of the day, skill level is still the most important thing. And for, for most of you wondering, my advice would still be to, to focus mostly on improving your skills as much as you can, because as your skill increases, your options are gonna be more open to what equipment you can use. So most advanced players are gonna be fine playing with slower rubbers, even if they don't like it, but they're gonna love the faster rubbers whereas a beginner is actually not going to be able to control a faster bat. So to finish off, I'm going to answer a few questions that have been given to me by my Instagram followers and fans. So first one, what are the pros and cons of harder rubbers on forehand? Most people play harder on their forehand than their backhands. Naturally, the backhand's more of a quick shot rather than a hard shot. This isn't for everyone. Some people have harder backhands and forehands, but most players play harder on their forehand side. So generally, they're gonna like a harder rubber more than a softer rubber. Just because softer rubbers, they dwell in longer, might be able to generate a bit more spin, but harder rubbers are gonna be able to allow you to hit the ball much harder and get more out of it when you play strong rather than soft. If you're a player that always plays soft and just keeps the ball on the table, I wouldn't recommend a hard rubber for you. But again, if you try it, you might somehow like it. So give it a try, but still, I would recommend most, most players who play harder on their forehand to play with a harder rubber. Same thing on the backhand. What, what is your rubber advice for backhand? That is the second question. Most players go with a softer backhand, softer rubber on their backhand than their forehand side, just because they don't play as hard. But still, most players who are pretty good on both sides, they like to stick with the same, have the same feeling on both sides of their racket. So you'll see a lot of players who are pretty good on their backhand and forehand, they'll play with, for example, a Tenor Geo 5 on the forehand and on the backhand. Should hard rubbers be combined with hard blades or soft blades? This is the third question. Again, I think it's personal preference. So some people would like harder rubbers with harder blades. Some people would like hard rubbers with softer blades. It comes down to personal preference and there isn't an answer. You're gonna to have to try for yourself to see if it works for you. So me personally, I like the harder rubbers with a softer blade like Peter Corbell. So good luck to all you guys to in finding out the, the equipment that suits you best, and I hope you all get what you want.